All right. Welcome back to episode three of the Go Tanium Show. I'm your host, Ashley McGlone. And today we have a special topic for you, a faster and lighter tanium. I knew you probably didn't think that was possible. We've done it again. We keep innovating. And today's topic is called ECF. I'm going to save that. What is ECF? That's what we're here to talk about today. So welcome to the show today. I've got my uh, special guest, Josh Ivey, with us today. Hi, Ashley. Hey, Josh. Thanks for doing this. Really appreciate you joining us today. So uh, what we're going to talk about today, ECF, the ink is not even dry on the documentation yet. This is so hot, fresh off the presses, and that's what we want to bring to you on this show is examples of this Tanium innovation that you can really take to the bank. So uh, speaking of documentation, today's episode is brought to you by my favorite website, docs.tanium.com. Yes, I, I, like I said, I'm there every week because things are changing all the time and I've got to read the docs. Also, all right, just for the record, number one, docs.tanium.com. Number two, kb.tanium.com. So you can go see the release notes every time you're planning your change controls. And number three is community.tanium.com. Those all battle it out for first place, but that's my ranked list of favorite websites. And the, the documentation here at Tame is top notch. But today's guest, Josh, co authored a community post at community.tanium.com. And that's what we're going to talk through today. So, uh, Josh and I actually were co workers at Microsoft before we came to Tanium a few years ago. And Josh was at a Tanium platform SME. And now he's rotated over to be a new SME category leader here with Tanium CX and Recorder and ECF. And these little things you may not have heard of, but these are the new kernels of goodness that give the Tanium client superpowers. And we're gonna talk about some more of those in our next episode, but for today, we're gonna to focus on ECF. So uh, let me go ahead and share out this uh, community post here. I'll drop that on the screen. And there's a bit.ly link that we'll share with you. Uh, again at the end of the show. So here we go. Endpoint configuration and UX enhancements, what you need to know before upgrading. That count, sounds kind of scary, like I've got to do something special here to make this work. But Josh, uh, tell us what is ECF first off? Thanks, Ashley. So ECF, Endpoint Configuration Framework, uh, is really the ability to configure the endpoints, honestly targeting and, and dynamically. Uh, we configure them with all of the data and tools from the modules that Tanium has, and we do it quickly and down at the endpoint level now. That's really all it is. So in the past, we used to configure the endpoint by pushing packages. Mm -hmm. So now it's kind of a pull model, the client. You got it. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So clients become aware of what uh, configurations are registered within ECF. So the modules register with ECF. They say, hey, I've got this tool package. Here's how it should be targeted, right? So Tanium Admin's the, the where clause of your questions that used to target those things. And now the clients figure out dynamically on the endpoint what they should have and what files are needed on them. And they request all of them via client API, do the downloads, and then the other part of uh, my duties that you mentioned, the, the Tanium CX, uh, there's a new config CX that's responsible for, you know, kind of orchestrating all of that down at the endpoint level. Wow. So how do they know what to ask for then? It sounds like a chicken and the egg kind of situation. <laughs> Great question. Uh, so ECF gets installed with Tanium client management. It's all kind of behind the scenes, and we'll show you that a little bit later. And if you want to go down to uh, the upgrading section, right? So yeah. best practice is really to do interact and trends since that's the backbone of how we, you know, interact and look through uh, the Tanium platform. And then really uh, installing Tanium client management first, uh, which also installs endpoint configuration, brings in all of these bits. And, and that's really that, uh, the chicken part uh, right there for us. So there are right. still a few packages that are needed. Endpoint configuration handles those uh, like uh, admins would be used to, uh, and that kind of kicks everything off. So I've heard some legendary tales of <laughs> performance improvements here. Could you talk us through some of these bullet points on what we're seeing? Sure. So after um, after this was fully planned out 
and out there in our uh, TAS rings and doing all of the testings. Uh, with our 17 modules that we had everything installed, there were 217 actions and over 38 tools packages in total. Wow. Yeah, that, that was a lot. And really, you know, what started us down this path was uh, the proliferation of all of these tools, everybody kind of doing the same thing and getting that in there. Uh, after endpoint config and getting all of that down there, there are now 47 actions total and 15 tools packages. So quite a reduction. Wow. Yeah, that is a reduction. So just thinking like a Tanium TAM, I'm thinking that's going to translate to some bandwidth savings as well. Absolutely. So um, because of how endpoint config works and it's orchestrated down at the endpoint and with the client API, the clients are intelligent enough now to figure out what files they're missing and only download the needed things instead of entire packages. Wow, so that, especially for our customers in constrained bandwidth locations, that's gonna be huge. I know I've got a, a particular customer that they even have some T1s to some uh, site links uh, going around and there's a lot of them. And so this will really be good news for them as well. Wow, so um, what do I do to get this going? So you walk through, I've got to install a few modules in a particular order. We've got uh, what's team client management so once I get it installed, I know Tanium 7.4, we're on this pre-configured kind of thing. Is it set up out of the box for me or do I need to go make any changes to anything? It is set up for you out of the box. And let's show some of that right now for us. Okay. So honestly, after installing everything, you'll notice a new shared service for endpoint configuration, which drops us here. There's really not a lot here, as you can see. Um, okay. A lot of it should work right out of the box and be pre-configured for everything that's needed. It's like we um, just drove across country to see Wally World and it <laughs> closed. It's like there's this new big thing and well, there's there's no grid. There's nothing I'm used to seeing here in a Tanium module. That's it. Um, the landing page here really is for this feature that uh, this banner is talking about, which is the configuration approvals similar to how the platform itself has action approver, okay. uh, two-person integrity, things like that, we can turn on configuration approvals specifically for endpoint configuration so that admins need to come in and approve changes to things like changing a profile or reordering of a profile for threat response, for example. Okay. So that's where you would see those things here uh, in grid format like everybody's used to seeing. So I think that's a really good point that I actually neglected to mention in my opening remarks that I planned to mention. But, you know, last time we were together on episode two, we talked to Doug and he was telling us how the development teams at uh, Tanium have consolidated across the back end of all these modules instead of breaking down the silos now. And now we've got one team. So you're really seeing that one team, one fight. There's my T-shirt. Yeah, the one team, one fight on the module approach. Uh, where now you've got this common core of developers that are developing the, this whole framework that's going to be consistent now across all the modules, uh, making life uh, good for all of us with these improvements. So, uh, so are there any things, uh, settings here that I need? Because I'm reading the community article and it says there might be a few things to tweak. Mm -hmm. Sure. So in the event that you need to configure anything, actually, before we get there, uh, I'll just kind of flip over here and we can see here are those nine default actions that are uh, enabled by endpoint configuration itself, that uh, chicken and egg problem you were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so really it's the, uh, the seven packages down here, which are targeted by platform, uh, mm -hmm. the client config and support packages that install the base bits that we need, uh, right? The config CX uh, as well as some other um, endpoint pieces, and that kicks off all of those jobs. And then uh, the endpoint manifest files, uh, super tiny, uh, just JSON files or serialized message files actually, that get down that let them know what to do. So by default, everything is configured uh, at an hour interval with a minute distribute over time. And these are really the, the knobs that we can tune uh, within endpoint configurations workbench. Okay. So if we come back to the endpoint config workbench and into the configuration cog, uh, of course, we'll have a service account set uh, that should have purview over everything in the environment. 
And honestly, one of the things that we can control is the distribute over time for the module tools that get down there, right? So if we have threat response installed and we need threat response tools, once those get down there to the endpoint, we can offset that. Uh, by adjusting this setting here, uh, the endpoints will download the tools and then wait this amount of random time before they begin those installations. That's a good point because I know most of our customers are already practicing this on their VDI infrastructure, their virtual mm -hmm. servers. They've got a, a, a randomization setting. They've already put the global setting in there. Would that be sufficient or do they need to do both of those? It depends per customer, especially with the backend disk uh, infrastructure. If they already have a distribute over, uh, the min distribute over time setting uh, that was discussed in the community article, that helps with the beginning uh, actions that I was showing before, right? So our endpoint configuration actions, these okay. will adhere to that setting. Mm -hmm. And then this one would further uh, randomize those tools installations. So uh, okay. if a customer is concerned about, uh, you know, disk IO for VDI, absolutely, please go ahead and set this in here. Okay. So it's like a double random. So you've got to randomize to get the action down there and then mm -hmm. another randomization factor. Once it's on, how long does it wait before it starts configuring? You got it. So one of the things that I heard about this is with this model, the point is that we can ramp up a new endpoint very quickly. Because in the past, we would have to wait for you know two, three, four hours of all these packages to hit their timer to go down to the endpoint with the tools. Mm -hmm. And so now it seems like we can get up a, a new client ramped up very quickly. And depending on this randomization setting kind of determines how quickly that happens. But you know, it could be best case, even your know, 15 minutes, you'd have a client fully configured and running, not waiting for those packages anymore. That is fantastic. Yep, that's correct. Uh, not only were we thinking about, you know, brand new install scenarios, but even upgrade for getting new tool sets or anything else down to the endpoints. It's uh, really even faster than it was before. Wow, especially so you're imaging a new machine, the Tanium client gets laid down, you don't have to wait a couple hours for things to start working anymore. It should be working uh, very shortly. Nice, especially for physical machines like laptops and desktops, they'll be up and running in no time. Really, that's great. Let's see. So um, anything under the global tab we need to look at or worry about? Yeah, so where tools installation settings happens for the those module tool sets. Mm -hmm. Under our global settings, uh, here's where we do turn on the configuration approvals uh, if that's required for the environment. Uh, there is another uh, role permission that can be assigned to the service accounts so that they can bypass their own approval, right? So if we're constantly deploying Intel packages or things are changing that are expected in, in modules, those service accounts can automatically bypass that if needed. We just need to explicitly grant that uh, role permission as outlined in uh, docs.tanium.com. Okay. And like most things, these are the settings you would probably not change, I'm guessing. These are just there. Just because you can change it doesn't mean you should, right? <laughs> That's a great point. Uh, yeah. The, the manifest packages themselves, like I said, they are very tiny uh, serialized message files. So they go mm -hmm. out every hour with a minute distribute over time. And the tools packages themselves actually are about 25 meg. Uh, Windows actually, the Windows package is actually the smaller uh, at about 18 meg, which is, is okay. pretty fantastic. So really work towards uh, streamlining this and getting things down as fast as possible. Now, speaking of that, uh, before we started recording here, you mentioned that there were some customers who turned this on and just didn't really notice there was anything changed. That that's a good story to tell. Uh, yeah, that is a great story to tell. We've, we've had some feedback from some of our first customers that installed TCM with ECF and then upgraded their modules. They had no idea that anything had changed. New tool sets got down there and they were seeing data right away. So it was really, really nice to, uh, to hear about that. Yeah, that is great. So what if things don't go that great? Is there anything we need to know about troubleshooting? You know, call your TAM, right? But is there anything... Uh, <laughs> that uh, the customers can do. 
Sure. Uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, outlined on docs, there is a new set of uh, sensors that can be used. A lot of them begin with endpoint configuration, so you can find them easily. Okay. And really the most helpful is there's a tools status and a tool status detail sensor. And that really shows us uh, what is down on the endpoints, what they think they should have, and if there's any error messages there, uh, that'll be highlighted in those sensors. Okay. Good to know. Um, yeah. Additionally, don't forget about Tanium Client Management, which I know that uh, you're going to be talking about in a future episode, but TCM can be used to connect over to one of those endpoints and further help troubleshoot, looking at health, log files, and even downloading a must-gather package uh, from the endpoints themselves directly into the console. And that will highlight a lot of the configuration, what got delivered down there, as well as all the log files associated with the actions. All right. Well, that's a, a good screen share for our attendees here on the episode. I do have just a couple questions. I want to re backtrack for a second because I forgot to ask right up front, what do I need to get ECF? Because this is the same time Blue Star is launching, same time 7.4.4 is launching, big things are happening. Do I have to have all those things? If I'm still on 7.3, can I get any of the benefits of ECF? You can. Uh, so right now, ECF is released for the 7.4 platform. We started there first. And later on, either this week or next, probably end of November uh, 2020, uh, it will be released to the 7.3 platform. It does require a minimum 7.3 version of 4250. So I'm going to ask you the question here, Josh. Every customer is now thinking as they're watching this, so what does this mean for performance impact on my endpoint? Mm, another great question. Uh, in the grand scheme of things, hopefully nothing changes. Uh, but of course, we uh, think that everything should be faster. So I mentioned in the beginning that we're no longer downloading entire packages. The clients are intelligent enough to know what they need and only request specific files. So not only is it more lightweight, uh, it's using less bandwidth on top of the already more efficient 7.4 platform. Uh, and then uh, just requesting what it needs. That's good news. Lighter, faster. I love it. So just the open-ended question here. What do you think this means for the future of Tanium? Tanium customers, you know, now that we've got these new Lego bricks in the box, what are we going to, you know, what kind of possibilities is that open for us? I, I think we can focus on even more simplification and focusing more on outcomes, right? So admins now no longer need to be worried about, all of these different actions and managing them. Uh, they can let ECF take care of that on the endpoint and they can really focus on other things that are important to them. So I think simplification is, is kind of the message here. That's fantastic. I, I just love working here where we're always making things better for our users. So thank you for joining us for this episode of the Go Tanium show from my messy office in the work from home world to yours. So stay tuned for next week when we catch up on a lot of other goodness that dropped in 7.4 that I don't know that it's just gotten the press that it needs from the everyday uh, Tanium console operator that we're targeting here as we talk about these things. So I'm going to go back, rewind the clock again, and talk about some of the 7.4 features that are, again, making life easier for you in the world of Tanium. And again, I'd like to thank our special guest today, Josh Ivey. Thanks for joining us. And so we'll see you back next time on the Go Tanium Show. Mm -hmm.